And thank you, Moo, for having me here tonight. I'm really honoured to be speaking to you all. Um, I wanted to start tonight by telling you a little bit of personal story, a couple of personal things about myself. Firstly, my parents love DIY. They, my, my father's nickname is Super Jeff, and he can fix anything. My mother's name is Lola, but give her half a chance, she'll give it a bloody good go as well. So that has taught me that when there is a problem, I can fix it. The second thing I wanted to share about myself is that I grew up with a younger sister, Millie, who had special needs. She taught me resilience and she taught me empathy. And she taught me that through self-belief, we can overcome overwhelming odds. And that has led me to, the type, to become the type of person who I feel a lot of the other community builders here tonight, and probably a lot of you as well, are too. The type of person who sees a problem in society, and because of that fundamental need and will to make a change and to make a difference, decides to try and fix it. So 16 years ago, I embarked on my OE to London. We were four giggling young girls moving to London, ready to take on the world. We started out by finding work and finding jobs. Lisa and I decided not to brave the corporate world of central London and to get jobs instead as nannies. Now, it wasn't very long before we found out that the lives of the rich and famous in London were very far removed from our upbringings as young girls in Masterton and Tauranga. <laughs> on my very first day on the job, I was tasked to take my two young children to and drop the oldest one off at school. That might seem like a simple enough task, but not when you're handed the keys to the Range Rover, uninsured, and asked to, shuffled out the door and asked to navigate the four-lane interchanging roundabouts between Marble Arch and Chelsea all on your own. So it was at that point that I realised I was a little bit out of my depth. And I didn't have anywhere to go for support. And I reached out to the family, but they were completely confident and they shuffled me out the door and were happy to see the back of me. So fast forward a few months and unfortunately I walked out that family's door never to return again. I should have listened to my gut instinct. I should have listened to that voice inside my head at the time that told me something isn't something isn't right about this. But I didn't, and part of the reason why I didn't was because I didn't have a community around me who was telling me to trust my own judgment. And that was the start of my community building career. By the way, there's no timer on this. <laughs> I might keep rambling. Um, <laughs> that was the start of my community building career. Um, and Lisa and I decided to start our own community to support New Zealanders and Australians moving to London who were facing the same challenges as us and needed to overcome those same obstacles. And so we busied ourselves building this business, but there were a few problems. We had no business experience. We had no recruitment experience. We had no resources. We didn't even have the internet to ask advice from. <laughs> so we were on our own, and we certainly had no money. We were living in a two-bedroom flat. Our desk was in the corner of our room, and we shared our flat with about six other various um, nationalities, including New Zealand's, Australians, and South Africans. You know what it's like. Um, however, we did have one thing. We had a small community. We had ourselves. We had each other. We had some friends. We had a few families we met nannying who believed in us and who we, who believe, who we believed in them. And we had nannies who we met who believed in our vision. So we set about connecting those people and making sure that the journeys they had together were the mo fundamentally more fulfilling and more enjoyable than the journeys they would have had being placed through anybody else in London. And so we created what I like to think of as an identity network, a community of people who individually are quite different, but together come together and share common traits and values. And at Kiwi Oz, those values were things like, we care about the grass between our feet, we want to live outdoorsy lifestyles, we want to be healthy, we want to raise children who are independent and have confidence and have resilience so that they can grow up to be strong young people. And that is what gave us an identity, it is what gave us a community, it was our DNA, and it was what tied us together. So this was not a quick win fix, it took a long time, and many times over the years we questioned whether we were doing the right thing. However, now Kiwi Oz is an established business, and um, it's been going for 16 years. We've got offices in London and in New Zealand. Um, and I'm pleased to say and grateful to say that throughout that journey I've managed to touch the lives of hundreds of thousands of people and built a seven-figure business. So what I've learned from that journey is that you can build a business that makes a difference in people's lives. 
And what it meant is that 12 months ago, when I found myself in a place where I felt I needed to make a change in my own life, I knew what I needed to do. I was in that space where I felt isolated and I felt like I needed to get myself, pull myself out of that career and mummy slump that so many of you will be familiar with. So I knew what I had to do. I needed to start another business and I needed to build a community. So I started reaching out to New Zealand women in business who had the same problems as me. And people that were looking for support, community support, peer support, support from people who are further along the journey than them, people who are looking for encouragement, self-belief, and also business success. I started a Facebook group, I started a conversation, and it resonated with people. Three months later, I had over 15,000 15, people in that community who were interacting every day and building what became its own community aside from myself. So the best thing about it is that this community is full of women who have so many common goals and values and dreams. We recognise that this is a grassroots place. We don't need people at the top telling us how to do it. We are the ones that know what this journey is like. We are the ones that know the problems that we are going through as women in business, the unique obstacles that we have to overcome, and now we are talking about it together. We are collaborating and we are making that change and we're making it ourselves, and it's a really special place for me to be. So what I wanted to share with you tonight is that you can make a difference through building a business and also building a community. And what I want to ask you tonight is this. Are you feeling fulfilled in your own life at the moment? Are you feeling fulfilled in your business life at the moment? Because if you are not, please look to the people around you. Think about whether they need support. Think about how you can support them. Be that person who reaches out, who starts a conversation, who joins a community or starts a community. Have self-belief because you can do it. And if you do, you never know, something beautiful might happen.